Jeff Gordon continues to lead by seven tenths of a second over pole sitter Ryan Newman. Matt Kenseth up to third. Rusty Wallace fourth. Three dodges, four in the top six, counting McMurray and Casey Kane. As you look at the leaderboard, Sterling Marlin's worked his way up into the top ten, as has Mark Martin. Yeah, Kurt Busch is lingering there in 11th. Jeff Green with his bent-up fender is still hanging in there in 13th. And Scott Wimmer is 14th. But guys, I tell you right now, two of our veterans, Sterling Marlin in that 40 car, the Coors Light car, and Mark Martin in the 6th. These two guys have worked their way in the top 10. Sterling Marlin, no top five finishes last year. And just remember, Jeff Hammond, Mark Martin, this is where he got his first career cup win in October 1989. Larry, what you're talking about, Mark, got a chance to speak with him this morning, and he was really excited about today's race. He really feels good about this tire combination. He thinks that when he drop off, a guy like him, a veteran like him, can come to the front, work his car on the bottom, work it on the top, and make his way and lead this race and possibly win it. Also, you talk about Sterling Marlin. Funny thing about him, when he got ready to qualify the day, the team spent all day practicing on race runs. Weren't worried about qualifying, just threw some tape on the nose and went out and made a pretty good effort, but they feel very good about this race car in the long haul. Yeah, a lot of guys worked on that. 11 teams worked on race setups on Friday because the forecast for yesterday was rain, and they were a little bit fearful of that. And you watch that out to the back of Dale Jr.'s car, and you say, where's Sterling going? <laughs> he went to the bottom, and Jr. went to the top. But you know, Larry, I still, I still think if I'm going to have my car one way or the other, I want to have it pretty fast on the get-go. Because if tires are going to fall off, I want to get me a big lead and then let them catch me. Coming toward the lead is Matt Kenseth, the 17. Whoa, he jumped, jumped, he jumped a little sideways right there. That's that kind of push loose off the of turn four. You run off that corner and it track really open it up for the rear. And what will happen, they drive off in the corner, the car gets a push, in other words, you turn the front steering wheel, the front tires, just slide. Oh, and they finally catch the rear wheel. Clear by two. And the difference in two and four is turn two, you got no room. So when it does that, you hit the fence. Over here, you got a little bit better angle coming off the corner. Mark Martin trying to make the move on Dale Jr. for eighth. Ninth place now. Yeah, and he's running the bottom. Uh, Mark is running pretty well, too. And that's the that's the line that you would expect Mark Martin to run because I've seen him race here, and his left wheels never get above the white line. Comers and goers, the fellow who led at the restart, Robbie Gordon, because he either took two or no tires to get track position, is back to 21st. Here's Robbie, four spots ahead of where he was running when that caution came out. Yeah, I mean, the problem right now, though, is I'm trying to see here how far he is behind the leader. He's uh, about 11 seconds in front of the leader right now, so he's over a half a lap down. And just to show you a little bit about what push loose is all about, uh, we can take a look here uh, at uh, what incident that happened off a of turn four there a minute ago. Watch the 48 car. Now he's up top. Now right here he grabs a whole big handful of steering wheel. He's got to cut, 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 cut. He's in the throttle wide open. But see how the back end will hop out? And that's just from trying to get the throttle wide open with the wheels cut left. When the front finally bites, then the back hops out just a little bit. Yes. Got to be on your toes. Jimmy Johnson, they have just not found their self this weekend here. He's back in 27th position, and he's only about uh, seven seconds from being going to lap down to the leader, Jeff Gordon. Throttle, man. There's nobody out there smoother than what you are. Just work that For the lead. Smooth. You can do it. Matt Kenseth underneath Jeff Gordon. Powers his way to the lead. He started 25th. I believe, I honestly believe that man, uh, Matt Kenseth, is going to try to show everybody I can win a championship and I can win a lot of races, too. Now, you see Jeff Burton in the 99 car. Remember, he just came out of the garage area about 20 laps ago with a radiator change. He's sitting there 19 laps down, but he has about 20 or 25 less laps on his tires. Once again, this shows you, even if you don't have a good race car, and Jeff had a decent race car, how much new tires will do for you or fresh tires. I'm kind of anxious to see uh, how far these guys are going to try to stretch it on, the, on their first green flag pit stop. See how far they think they can go on these tires. And let me correct myself, Kansas started 23rd, not 25th, but still gained 23 spots and come to the lead this early in the race. In less than 100 laps. Casey Kane moving his Dodge up on Rusty Wallace. 
This is for fourth place, about two seconds behind the leader. And, Darrell, I'm with you. I'm anxious to see about who, how, who's going to go the furthest on these tires because this race, it always seems to about this point in time of the race, get that green flag run to it. Cars kind of get settled down. Cars are starting to, they're getting a the handle on a little better with adjustments they've made, and you get this long green run here. Well, if you could look at the total, if you look at the whole racetrack, we got cars everywhere. You know, there's cars all on all straight on both straightaways and all, all the corners. They're spread out now to where a driver's got a little room and he doesn't have to take any chances. And what's going to be a big factor, it's going to be about 10 or 12 laps. Our leader, Matt Kenseth, in the 17, he's going to start catching the tail end of the field. And that's when he really gets in trouble sometimes. Those guys get into desperation trying to stay on the lead lap. I hate desperation. <laughs> Kevin Harvick's had kind of an up and down day. He sits in 24th, Matt. My Kevin Harvick will tell you if there's one racetrack on the schedule that he would love to delete, it would be Rockingham. He's never led here to Nextel Cup car. He led 24 laps yesterday in the Bush Series race and finished third. He told me the only thing that might have transferred, maybe a little bit of confidence, but it certainly is not helping the handling of the car. He says the car is just junk. It is way too loose to drive. He's tried to move up high and see the high. drivers have either a love it or leave it attitude about this place well, it, it's it's so slick and, it, and it's so difficult to drive these cars with 800 horsepower around a track that's slick like this it it can just absolutely it frustrates you so badly that you just want to get out of the car and go home and i tell you talking about right now getting out mark martin was so glad to get out of daytona and get to rockingham he missed, missed the bush series race there finished dead last after engine problems in the daytona 500 he was glad to get to Rockingham. And, and Mike, the other part is you, you literally are pushing and loose all the time. You turn the wheels. No, nothing happens. You're pushing. Then the front bites. And then the back end comes around. Now you're loose. And the crew chief's driving you crazy about, give me some feedback, baby. Give me some feedback. I said, leave me alone. Can't you see I'm busy? <laughs> So Martin trying to move up while one of his Roush Racing teammates, Matt Kenseth, leads this race. And another, Greg Biffle, is in 20th spot. Here's Jeannie. Well, guys, there are a lot of honorary pit crew members, but this young man is truly honorable. John Silver, the brother of front tire carrier Jeff Silver, is holding the sign today in the 16th pit. Wednesday, he's being deployed to Iraq as a member of the National Guard. So he takes off on February 25th. Expected to stay there for 12 to 18 months. Doing some work today. Got a bigger job to take off for on Wednesday. We certainly salute you as we take a look again at John Silver. If you haven't looked at Ford lately, look again. We wish him well, Jeannie, and send our best wishes to all of our troops, especially those stationed abroad. I actually got a call from the Air National Guard, the 131st Aviation Group from Company E, that called me from Kuwait this week and said, hey, say hello to us. We're going to be tuned in to Fox this weekend watching your race. And we're going to ride with Greg Biffle. It's not going to be a helmet cam. It's going to be a suspension cam. And just look at it. This is the shock. It never quits moving there. You see how much brake he uses getting in the corner? The rotors actually start to glow, a lot like they would at a short track. But if you just notice, DW, it never quits moving. The suspension is always moving at this racetrack. Yeah, and you can see the sidewall of that tire, Larry, how much it's felt. See that belly it's got in it right down there, that's where it's flexing at, and that's, uh, that's one of the changes in the tires this year. But you know, Larry, probably you're going to get a little brake break heat here like he did momentarily right there because more than likely you don't have brake ducts on the car here. You probably don't, you know, use enough brake here just momentarily to where you don't want to open that front end up and let that uh, air go in. A lot of time the brakes here can just be a little security blanket for that driver driving just, off in the corner. I'm just touching them, I promise. That's what makes it there. That's right. Dodge has dominated qualifying, but now we're at parity. Kansas 4 leads Gordon's Chevrolet ahead of Newman's Dodge. 